<laughs> so she's talking to our friends and she's on her phone. I need to communicate with my Instacart shopper. <laughs> Are they shopping right now? Yeah. Oh. All right, they're, they're go replacing ahead. the salt. <laughs> All right, you can go ahead with the introduction while I okay. <laughs> while I just finish. <laughs> well, good morning, <laughs> afternoon, day. <laughs> good day. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from the Minimal Mom, along with my multitasking twin sister, twin <laughs> sister Diana. Oh goodness, welcome back. It's good to see you today. So, are you are you done now, or can, <laughs> can we actually? Actually, this is what I actually wanted to talk about. Ironically enough is anybody who's on Apple and who has done the latest update, it took me a while to get around to it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't um, want new things to learn after the update, so I always put it off. Exactly, possible. exactly. Anyway, yeah. I don't want my text messages to look different. So, but now, you know, most of you know that it keeps track of your screen time for you. Oh. This is fascinating. And like, how many times a day you pick up your phone? Mm -hmm. I think the one that was, I wasn't actually too surprised with my social media use. I. I don't have time for yeah. a lot of that right now, but mm -hmm. anyway, actually what I was most surprised about, I was showing you this, uh, where is it, my text messages. In one day I got 88 text messages. Miss Popular. Know if that's a lot, yeah. or that is a lot. That is a lot. Okay. <laughs> text messages. <laughs> I mean, maybe I respond too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, so this has been fascinating, and and, um, and for my husband too, we've been analyzing, comparing. But it's funny. I read this study that was talking about, you know, I, I think it's not news that you know being on social media too much it actually is causing anxiety for people. It causes that comparison trap. The thing that I thought was most interesting is the more time that people spend on social media mm -hmm. the more lonely they feel yeah. like and it feels you mm -hmm. know like that might be you know kind of a inverse reality there and everything so what the study was saying is when people limited their social media and that's including like YouTube Facebook Instagram to 30 minutes per day their feelings of like self-worth and of not being alone actually were kind of restored and so they were feeling okay. good about themselves. But 30 again. minutes is still a good amount. I mean, you should be able to get all your Depending on your habits. Depending on your habits. Yeah. Minutes, right? Well, yeah. I don't know. Have you ever got sucked into the Facebook vortex? I mean, yeah. I don't... Oh, yeah. No, no. I know how it I mean, goes. 30 minutes at a time, maybe. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, for myself, I I don't really go on Facebook all that often, and I know I should for blogging and real estate. We use it for net networking, so I like I'm torn a lot of times. Um, but I don't feel good after. Okay, going how on. about YouTube? Like, you know how you watch one video and then it, it suggests the next yeah. ones, and you're. I, YouTube doesn't make me feel bad though, like Facebook does. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Even Instagram. But the other thing that I've done, and this could be a good thing to tackle during the Easter season, which is why we're even talking about this today. Um, what is to unfollow and unfriend yeah. people that don't make you feel good on Instagram yeah. or Facebook. If there are people when there's something or other comes up, it causes a negative reaction <laughs> in you. Mute them. They don't have to know. <laughs> like that's what's so great now about yep. these features. They don't have to know. So it's I think not this, worth it. This is funny though. I'll just out myself in the text exchange that we had the other night. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was late. I was tired. So that's another thing that I've learned too. Like if you're already feeling a little tired, maybe a little just not yourself or whatever, mm -hmm. just avoid it yeah. like read a good book you know yeah. talk to a friend like <laughs> put on worship music um, and so mm -hmm. there I am it's late I'm tired but I'm scrolling through Instagram and I'm sending pictures to Dawn and I'm like these these people are the same age as us but I think they look older <laughs> but they wrote a book and I haven't I, and, and it was just like oh my goodness like it wasn't until I actually sent it to you and hit send that I was just like what is wrong with me? Like, but it was I'm, funny because then your next text was, and I know that when I cast judgment on others, then judgment is going to be returned to me, right? Exact. 
So she had this like three text exchange like, with herself and yeah. then by the end she had kind of, and I'm like, thanks for resolving that on your own because it was kind of late and I didn't really yeah, have the energy. could respond. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna coach myself through this right now. Yeah. So anyway, so you're not alone if you get caught in the comparison trap or feeling like you're mm -hmm. behind trap or I know fear of missing out, there's like a term oh, yeah. for it now is like a huge Hold one. On. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I think even oh. in that we can trust the Lord and be present. Like when I recognize, like it's showing me that I pick up my phone five to eight times per hour. Yeah. It's like, wow, that's five to eight times that whatever came across my phone was more important than whatever my actual present reality yeah. was. You know, so that can just be, I, I think this is super helpful. Oh, like just, I don't know why Apple did that, that, right? Because honestly, isn't it going to cause you to. Well, yeah, I don't know. They don't care if you're on your they phone, I guess. Care. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it. it's good. We need we need because we read the the big stats, you know, about how much time Americans spend or you know people spend, but to actually see it for yourself and be like, oh, you know, yep. I'm above uh, average. I'm a statistic. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, so how does this relate to Easter, right? Which is coming up in less than four weeks now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of uh, Christian traditions celebrate the Lent season, and so that would have kicked off this past week on Wednesday, um, and so and you know and some. A lot of people, you know, whether it's your faith tradition or not, choose to just give something up during Lent, mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's actually, yeah, so that's what God wants to encourage and yeah. is doing. Uh, it's a form of fasting is really what it is. And so um, the benefit of it should be, and kind of the heart posture or attitude toward it shouldn't be like, I'm bad or I'm doing something bad. Like sometimes it's kind of turned into like, oh, I know sugar is bad for me or I know screen time is bad for me. And so I'm going to give up something that's like causing me to be sinful. Okay. Um, when actually, and it, we can take the same thing. So like giving up screen time and turn it toward, I'm going to remove something in my life. And when I feel that urge to go toward it, I'm actually going to take that time, energy, focus and give it toward the Lord. Yeah. And so it's not so much like I'm trying to, um, you know, get rid of my sinful nature because Jesus already did that. Okay. And we need to recognize that and receive that. And that's not something we earn or work for. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it shouldn't at all be something like, okay, this Easter season, I'm going to work toward being more like Christ. The fact is he already made you like him and when he died. Okay. So what the heart posture should be, again, same thing is, okay, instead of screen time, when I have that urge to pick up my phone, I'm actually just going to take a moment. I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to thank the Lord for his death and for his salvation and for mm -hmm. what he's done in my life. I'm going to put on a worship song and I'm going to take that YouTube time that I would have spent and I'm going to put on one of my favorite worship songs and my whole family is just going to take that time and we're going to worship the Lord. Yeah. And so that's, that's the good. invitation and mm -hmm. I'll give you, this is a great scripture again, I know you've heard this one before, um, but it's just, it's been like something that's I've been confronted a lot in my life right now. And so this is Matthew 9, 16 through 17. It says, no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch tears away from the garment. So if you have something old and you put something new on it, when that material stretches, it's not going to be a good situation. You're going to have more holes. Neither is new wine put into old wine skins. If it is, the skins burst and the wine is spilled and the skins are destroyed, right? Because wine, as it ferments, expands and an old wine skin isn't stretchy anymore. It isn't able to move and vacillate with uh, the, the contents of it. But new wine is put into fresh wine skins and so both are preserved. And so I want to propose that this is the main reason why we fast, whether it's for an extended time during Lent or if it's, you know, I know some people do one day a week um, or like three days a month or, you know, whatever that might look like for you or giving up something occasionally or adding on something. Anyway, yeah. this is why we fast though, is to stay flexible. Yeah. Because the good. tendency is toward what we have, what we know, what mm -hmm. we think. <laughs> and even, I mean, it could be in our faith, we're tended to guard and really hold tightly to our beliefs. It could be in our family, like we're not really allowing people to change. It could be, this is where I was confronted with it again, when I travel uh, to India or out of the country, you know, we spent three weeks there with family over Christmas. And I'm just recognizing like, oh, I'm not flexible or I'm not flexible <laughs> enough. You know, like I still brought my Starbucks coffee with me and I'm going to have my coffee every morning because that is my right, <laughs> you know, slash addiction. And like, 
there should be anything in our life that we're just so dependent on and so i'm just recognizing that for myself like i want to stay flexible and i think especially as we get older like it's actually even more important to be aware of this yeah I think that is so good that we just ex we expect things to look a certain way yeah. even with our kids yep. or our spouses yep. and so to be open to be like okay lord like <laughs> your will is so much better yeah so. absolutely and as we're turning you know kind of our heart and our affections toward him we're being sensitive to his leading absolutely. and and that feels good like there's yeah. a lot of of life in that when we know mm. that we're in tune you know with the lord and you know kind of in line with with what he's doing and I think what actually is really fun too, especially if you're gonna do this with your kids or a spouse or another roommate or something like that, is to actually print out a calendar for the Lenten season and make X's. Maybe oh, sure. because you were successful you know, with what you were giving up, but also maybe because you listened to worship music on the way to school or you did your devotions as a family or you know, read a passage out of the Bible yeah. and do it together. There's something really gratifying yeah. about marking it off each day on the calendar and especially for kids too that are you know, more visual yeah. to be able to see that process I think is it's really rewarding and it's really encouraging to keep you going when some days it's not as easy as others. So Father, I just bless us in this. I bless us in this Easter season. However we decide to prepare our hearts, that as we turn toward you, that you would meet us there, Lord God, in such profound and tangible ways, that we would feel your presence, that we'd be confident that we're hearing your voice, Lord God, even that you would put those in our path who need to know about your goodness and your salvation. And Lord, give us the confidence to tell them about your love. So I just bless this time of preparation, Lord God, and I thank you that we're all in it together. I thank you for this group, this community, uh, this, <laughs> these friends, Lord God, that we're all in it together and we're, we're on this path together. So I just bless it now in Jesus' name.